This is episode 145 of the Rise Up Podcast. We're a morning radio show hosted by Steve and Tim on Family Life, a network of stations across New York and Pennsylvania. This podcast is a weekly conversation designed to help you think and laugh and keep your eyes on Jesus. If you haven't already, subscribe today so you don't miss a single episode. And find out more about our show at familylife.org. Sharing the message of hope, it's Rise Up with Steve and Tim on Family Life. A lot happens in a short amount of time this time of year, doesn't it, Steve? Oh, yeah. You've got Halloween happens in the community, Mm -hmm. and then an election. Mm. Oh, and then get ready, Thanksgiving, and well, we all know what's coming all after that. Wow. But like something my wife brought up to me that I thought, I had never considered this before, Steve, about this holiday time of year, Mm -hmm. is, well, so we were taking our little girls out in our community Mm -hmm. uh, for for trick-or-treating. And I was just thinking about how, well, we're stopping at any old house and, you know, you get nice comments here and there. You're like, oh, I love your costume. Oh, this is nice. You know, and, and it's kindness, right? Kindness, kindness between sure. strangers. Very welcoming. Welcoming. Right. Kindness between strangers. The lawn signs are out. You uh-huh. see the name of that politician. You see the name mm. of this politician. Uh-huh. But it didn't matter. And I had never thought about that before. Oh, here's this holiday where... All sorts of people who, if you get them down and say, hey, let's talk politics, is there going to be any agreement? No. But when it comes time to just Mm -hmm. choosing to, like, celebrate hmm, kindness and strangerly goodness between each other, like, that can happen. That can happen. And it struck us as kind of ironic that, oh, man, sometimes that doesn't happen that the family table thanksgiving Ooh, even sometimes it doesn't happen you know even christmas right and i just think about how well, well what do we do about that right it's it's not the hard and fast rule because uh yes there is oh, a lot right, of feelings right. in this quick but it is i never thought about that how uh there's one vision of of halloween you're like oh, no it's awful yeah, that's the dark that's the bad one and we get that but. right we understand but you're right the welcoming everybody's we're all one we're all together however the uh, many people can relate to the Thanksgiving or Christmas gatherings, mm-hmm. whether they're sitting at the table or exchanging gifts or running around where, uh-oh, uh, uncle or or somebody is going to be there uh, that we're not going to get along with. And there's all this me, 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 even gift giving and grabbing, you know, gifts for Christmas. But yes, those holidays are the ones we generally think of as the, ah, oh, it's family, it's right. thanks, we're all one. Well... Not necessarily. Yeah. It's the other one that we have this, many people have this dark view of, and there is a dark view that is like, it's together. That is interesting. It comes back to between, I know a lot of times, Steve, when you and I have conversations, I love that we often come back to saying, you especially, that it's a matter of the heart. And you often say, Mm -hmm. Steve, like with God, it's always a matter of the heart. And man, can it be any different with us? I was thinking about the difference between how we treat strangers Mm -hmm. And and family. And I could mean family like either either people you know really, really well and they're right. friends that are like family or family. And, you know, if you're looking for like one big takeaway, I don't have it right here. But like just this observation to me is interesting because in the car, a stranger, we can be really rude to them. We don't know them. So we honk at them. We don't see their face. So we think, oh, they're this big jerk. They're cutting me off and trap. And then other times, though, strangers, it's easy to to have small talk. Mm-hmm. And to think the best of them just in passing and, and have a good time. Sometimes with family, we've got the, the this other thing going on. We know them so well that they bug us. We know them so well that these little quirks always get on our nerves. Or, or, other side here, we know them and so we say, oh, well, yeah, I can overlook that fault. Because look, if you really knew their heart, you'd realize they're not like that all the time. And so it's interesting to me, I think if I did have to have a takeaway with how we treat strangers, how we treat family, like the grace we're willing to grant other people says more about us than it does about them. Because people are always people, right? Like they're always going to be guilty. We're all sinners, but they've all got goodness in them too. That grace that we're willing to show them, it, it doesn't define them. It really has a lot more to defining what's going on in my spirit. You took me to, uh, I've, I've seen in my head right now, there's visions of, it's probably happened on multiple sitcoms or comedy sketches or, or whatever, where you are with your family, loved one, and it's like, and then a stranger walks by and that same person was going, go, oh, oh, hello there. Exactly. How are you? Exactly. Nice to see you. Many times we're kinder, as you meant, pointed out to strangers than we are, depending on the situation, exactly. which, you know, God says, you know, easy. Love God, not easy, simple, mm-hmm. uh, or whatever. You know what I'm yep. saying? Love God, love people. doesn't say 
love God, love this person, don't love that person. It's like, yeah, uh, it does say a lot about us, how we're going through things uh, at the moment. And uh, we are to show that grace to others because there's many, many times that we need that very same grace ourselves. Yeah, I um, uh, a verse that was in my, my thoughts earlier this week, and I had to look up the reference for it because, well, you know, just kind of had an election. So we think about things like what Colossians 4, 6 says, let your speech always, that was always, mm-hmm. let your speech always be gracious. Mm. I, I mean, always be gracious. And I, 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 I have to think, do I do that? No, honestly, I don't. Sometimes I let my speech be whatever Tim wants it to be because mm-hmm. I had something to get off my mind. And I feel comfortable with this person, so I'm just going to tell them, you know, whether it's family or friends. Or you know, let your speech always be um, whatever emotion you're feeling. And, and, and it's no, no. The word says, let your speech always be gracious. And then I like this image, too, because the rest of the verse says your speech being seasoned with salt so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. I think, I don't know exactly what it means for speech to be seasoned with salt, but I get the feel of that, right? Mm -hmm. That it's supposed to be speech which adds something, speech which helps, speech that doesn't take away and make things bitter, speech which brings out the best in a situation, speech that brings out the best in the stranger that you met trick-or-treating, or speech that brings out the best in that uncle, whose politics you really can't stand. Mm. But you know what? You're family and you're going to see them at Thanksgiving anyways. So let the speech be seasoned with salt, whether it's the strangers or whether it's the family. And we're not saying by any means ignore your feelings. I mean, we all have feelings and we're not agreeing necessarily with someone else. Uh, We can disagree, but not be disagreeable. That's the way to do it. Disagree, but not be disagreeable. Yeah, we can do it that way because it's not easy easy mm-hmm. and, and we and we fall short sometimes and so when you do fall short hey it's the time to it's this time of year you hear that word a lot forgiveness right. thanksgiving thank you lord that uh i can come to, back to someone and say you know i said something to Maeve. maybe they didn't even take it harshly but you all of a sudden later thought, like oh did i say that too oh, harshly better. to go back and say mm-hmm. uh, i am so sorry i didn't mean it i hope it didn't come across that way because it was not my intent mm. to come across harshly uh and uh, please forgive me. And mm-hmm. and whether they forgive you or not, that's that's the next step. But uh, the point is, yeah, you do have your feelings, and you can disagree with someone. That's good. But bring it across in a in a loving manner, which God, uh, we're supposed to be more like Jesus every day. Yep. And it's not easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just a step by step process. But you're right; it's an important lesson uh, this time of year as we get more together with family, which. Some, it's a wonderful, wonderful time. We can't wait for it. Others are just dreading uh, that time together, but we can still have that attitude of love, the, the Jesus kind of love. We weren't sure how you liked your coffee, so we didn't make any. Hope that's okay. It's Rise Up with Steve and Tim on Family Life. Praise God for doctors and the, the knowledge that God has given yeah. doctors and mm-hmm. nurses and things to. Uh, they now have come up with a way uh, with blood sugar levels. They can tell, uh, believe it or not, true story, uh, by the pitch of your voice. Whoa. Huh. Uh, whether you have high blood sugar levels That's or low wild. or normal, that kind of thing. Huh. But, you know, you can't just begin those things. There's so much experimentation that goes on beforehand. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, you know, they have to they use uh, animals and different things to, to oh, try that. And I was okay. able to. Uh, I, beca- I was able to get a hold of some recordings. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I was able to get a hold of some recordings of some of the animals uh, that they experimented on. Remember earlier, it was just several days ago, we talked about the flies and what the flies oh, those, like and the, don't like. And the recordings you had the of the, uh, the, right. the actual well, fly. Yeah, right? Well, yeah, and they uh-huh. were able to use those same flies, or at least relatives of them, I suppose, <laughs> <laughs> to find out, experiment whether the flies had high or low blood sugar levels. Uh-huh. So, uh, uh-huh. again, these are just some recordings uh, I was able to uh, right. obtain. Yes, uh, get through your very hands much. On these yeah, get, so this was a fly. See if you can tell if it was high or low blood sugar levels. <laughs> Yummy. That's, I love it. That's high. That's high blood sugar <laughs> that levels. Is that what that is? Yeah, huh? and then they had other flies uh-huh. that were like. Ooh, that's <laughs> no good. Can you guess which is the These low? These are not what? actual records. This is not. They said they were. not happening. They said they were real. I don't know. As refreshing as that first sip of coffee in the morning. 
This is Rise Up with Steve and Tim on Family Life. Rise Up on Family Life. You've heard Jesus died for you on the cross, heard those words before. Do we often think, though, of like the hardships in Jesus' lifetime? Like, yeah, there were a lot of them. Dark times, they were there Mm. for sure. Now, I got to think about me. Now, for me, when I'm struggling in a dark time, I can tend to forget about everybody else, their problems. Yeah, those go by the wayside. I'm focused on my problems here, okay? What about Jesus? What about his hard times? I look at this one where Jesus was praying all night before he went to the cross, Mm. praying in, in agony in his heart, the Bible says. But he didn't stop caring for me. He didn't, in that moment, stop caring for you. Here's what I read from Pastor Tim Keller. I love this. If Jesus Christ didn't abandon you In his darkness, Mm. the ultimate darkness, why would he abandon you now in yours? May the blessings of the Lord be with you in all that you do today. This is Rise Up on Family Life.